what I was going to do today with my little scrappy notes was um, share a little idea, which is a vision um, for a possible future for New Zealand uh, built on you know, the promises of tomorrow and kind of moving on from um, the legacies of, of where we've been. I think uh, we've heard already this um, evening some of the challenges we're having. Uh, the economy is not in a great, great shape uh, in terms of its consistently having declined for the last 50 years. Uh, we built a country on largely commodities and um, very, very little IP. We've also heard about how a lot of the best and brightest people that we've got have left uh, for brighter shores and for more money and for more interesting lives. Uh, and many of you here today represent you know, some of those uh, people. Uh, in recent weeks, we've also uh, been increasingly attacked for our brand as a clean, green country. Uh, you know, John Key on BBC two weeks ago was basically given a hiding as to whether our brand is actually legit and whether we're losing, uh, losing a grip on it. The other thing, uh, as Tim said, uh, that is less known but is actually increasingly important about the country is we are, like many nations, entirely reliant on oil. Um, but we are more so reliant in that, as a country, um, we require all of our oil that we need to run the country to be imported. Uh, well, not all, but basically 95 to 100 percent, depending on when and where you choose to, to pick it. We import about 150,000 barrels a day, and we spend $160 million a year shipping our money offshore to pay for oil. Sorry, $160 million a week, uh, which ends up being $8 billion a year. $8 billion is a big number. How do you provide some context for $8 billion? Eight billion is basically one Fonterra every year exporting Fonterra equivalent, basically imported in oil. It's about half the impact of a Christchurch earthquake every year. And it's considerably more than the entire tourist and tourism industry that we have as an export earner every year. So eight billion is a really important figure that we need to come to grips with as a country in terms of how much impact it has on the potential for all of us back home but also overseas. Some of you have heard about the concept of peak oil which was something raised in the 50s about the idea that by the early 70s America would run out of oil. It would run out of oil in terms of production capacity and from the 70s onwards it would be able to produce less and less every day until eventually 2020 or 2030 it ran out. That prediction came true in the early 70s, and ever since, America has produced less and less oil. And since then, every other country that produces oil has either reached peak oil or will continue to move towards that point, such that when India and China come on stream, within 20 or 30 years, we're talking about a, a world that has no more oil. Clearly, one of the foremost challenges of our generation, and because we're so reliant on it as a country, is how to solve this issue and how to resolve the problem of renewable energies for the future. What's this got to do with New Zealand, New Zealanders and Kia? Well, we were asked to talk about a big idea, so I thought I would share a pretty big one. What if we had a plan that could capture the imagination of the whole world and the inspiration of all the people around the world that are trying to solve these problems? to look to New Zealand as a leader and to encourage them to move to our country to help solve the challenges that we face in this space. What if that plan cost nothing at the beginning? What if that plan made the country famous instantly as being the small little nation that had a gigantic vision to be the person that stuck, stuck up their hand and said, we want to sponsor the future of tomorrow? And what if that plan, the bill for it, wasn't due 
until the point where actually extraordinary feats of technical and human innovation were actually reached and proven. And finally, what if that plan's bill, when it finally came to be paid for, New Zealand as a country would be excited and more than happy to pay for it because it would turn itself on its investment many times over both for New Zealand and for the world. It's a bit of a shame that Michael Bushridge isn't here because I was going to talk about something that he's intimately involved in, which is something called the XPRIZE Foundation, which he's a director of. Many of you may have heard of the XPRIZE, many of you may not. The XPRIZE Foundation is something that was started by the Ansari family when they created the XPRIZE for space. It's something that eventually became Virgin Galactic and eventually has enabled me to buy a ticket to go to space. Since then, they've expanded the program and are awarding all sorts of prizes for amazing technological and innovation-led challenges that they call the great challenges of the world. There are 10 challenges in the environmental space that haven't been sponsored. The vast majority of the prizes are sponsored for between one and uh, $10 million to achieve the technical challenge. The concept that I have is, what if New Zealand as a country created the largest prize pool for incentivized development and innovation ever, a pool of a billion dollars to fund and sponsor the prizes of those 10 outstanding ideas, uh, outstanding challenges. Things like solar paving, in other words, turning roads and pavements into energy generating infrastructure. Things like electric flying, which enable us to reduce the 200 million barrels a day uh, that we spend on oil for aviation as a global community. And things like um, uh, ultralight wind turbines, which enable us to generate enormous amounts of power with not a lot of capacity and mass. What if New Zealand stuck its hand up and said, we would sponsor these. We will be the person, the country, the brand that chooses to support these endeavors because we know how important they are for this generation and the generations beyond. Why would someone like, well, talk like as a person, because Brian's been talking for so long about that as a brand, why would a brand want to sponsor something like this and commit to a billion dollars? Well, first of all, it puts the country back on the map firmly and squarely as a country that understands the real challenges of the world. A country that is committed to the future, as opposed to just mucking around and taking small baby steps to try and get by the every three years election cycle. But practically, a country that would then attract thousands and hundreds of companies to join the revolution and move to New Zealand if we made it as part of the challenge, a condition that you have to set up operations and R&D in New Zealand. Give people a visa and now all the, allow all their teams to move over there and uh, create a stir around people looking to this country on the edge to lead us forward. What if part of the plan was that if the winner was awarded the $100 million, but the government had most of it or half of it in convertible equity, so they actually get a ticket to the future of this trillion dollar industry instead of focusing on selling off our hydro and uh, uh, coal assets? What if the winner, when they won as a condition, had to create those companies from New Zealand, in New Zealand, partnering with New Zealand and New Zealand universities? All of that to me is strong ROI for a reason to pledge a billion dollars. What's the cost of a billion dollars? It's a big number, but what does it really mean? It's less than one-tenth of what this current government is committing to building roads to enable the cars of old traditional technology that are continue to pollute and uh, develop global warming for the next generations of New Zealanders. It's about the amount they pay to bail out an uh, incompetent banker in Timaru. It's about twice the amount we are willing and happy to lose to host the Rugby World Cup. And it's about six weeks worth of our oil bill. So my idea is, why doesn't New Zealand pledge six weeks of our oil bill? We don't even have to put any money down, right? We only pay when the solutions are there. To change the future, inspire the planet, and create a country where New Zealanders want to come back home, to be a part of the future, and that the graduates that we produce don't want to leave because they know that's where it's happening. 
It's just an idea.